My name is Nate, this is Narrowway Homestead, and this is my good buddy Minion, and this is what we're all about. I owned a contracting business in West Virginia, and in March 2020, I moved to an empty field with a camper. I have a bunch of solar power, I have rainwater collection. How did I get here in three years, and what's the plan for the future? March 1st, 2020, I arrived with a camper and a whole bunch of stuff that I just put underneath tarps because, again, it was an empty field. The camper got stuck right here at the end of the driveway. I had to be out of my house in Pennsylvania by the end of March, so I had to figure out what I was going to do with all the stuff that was still there. So I started looking all around this field at the edge of the woods to figure out where I wanted to build a building. And I found a spot where I put up a quick pool building. That building actually went up and got dried in in about seven days. Went back to Pennsylvania, rented a U-Haul, and the camper was still kind of in the way of even getting back the driveway, and it was so muddy back here, and this area is actually like a downhill slope anyway. No way I was getting a U-Haul here. I met one of my neighbors. I didn't really know the neighbors very well at all. I was just getting here, and he had a big storage building, and he said, hey, you can go ahead and put your stuff in here. And so I backed the U-Haul in, unloaded it. His eyes got really, really wide as he realized how much stuff I managed to fit in a U-Haul. And I think he gave me somewhere around three months. He's like, it, it can stay here for three months or something. But, you know, after that, it's going to need to go. Um, got it out of there within a week or two. Just pickup trucks back and forth about a mile all the way over here. And it rutted up the yard and everything. And it was already rutted up because that's how I got all the material back here was on the back of a pickup truck. I was collecting rainwater off of the canvas the canopy on my camper i would sometimes go down to the creek that's way 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 down there and i would actually get water there i would also wash my clothes in the creek that wasn't a lot of fun but uh i knew better things were coming i actually own 102 acres here it was really cheap it was about a thousand an acre and i had saved a certain amount of money so that i could do things like solar power solar power and rainwater were my two biggest um priorities if you will i wanted to get power and i wanted to get water before all that though i got tired of using a shovel at the end of the woods so i actually decided to build an outhouse it's about a quarter of a mile roughly down this trail and off over there i didn't want it in the main field because i knew it was just going to be a quick temporary type of outhouse it's kind of central to my property but i wanted to make sure that i had something i could use that i could you know just run a four-wheel or two real easily before i built my permanent one the ground dried up, I got the camper moved over here from the end of the driveway, and it's pretty much the highest little knoll in this hill, so there's no water that it's just gonna constantly rush under it and try to erode anything. Didn't have a porch yet, I built that about a year later. But I was focused on digging a hole for my solar power. And why was I digging a hole? Well, I wanted the batteries down where the climate was a little more controlled, the temperature was more stable. I built a wooden frame, mounted 18 panels, Got my charge controller and everything all stored in the little shed that's underneath of them. All the equipment's in there. And I got myself electric, and I wanted to get electric not only to the camper, which was really easy because it was right next to it, but I dug a trench to get electric all the way down to the storage building. And I dug it really, really deep because I also ran water line, and I wanted that below the frost line. That took forever to dig by hand. But the other thing I was working on simultaneously was that tank back there. This is a 2,500 gallon tank. I had, I didn't have the gutters installed when I built the building, but I installed them after the fact, ran both downspouts over here, got leaf guards in the gutters, and this is what they call a leaf eater. It basically kicks out particles um, over top of a fine mesh screen, and the water goes down here into the first flush diverter, which basically takes the dirtiest water of the rainfall. And once that's filled, and hopefully the dirtiest water is now off the roof, it then goes over top, it was over here and into the tank. When I first set it up, I just had a pump on a pressure switch inside the building and it went down to my line over here. And eventually I upgraded that to a uh, pump in this little area, which is heated in the winter time, stays warm. There's a pressure tank in there, typical well setup actually. And then I ended up burying all the lines. That was the second year. One thing I didn't really count on was just how annoying cooking was going to be out here. And so I really didn't have any plans for cooking other than I knew we could like make fires and cook on it, right? So that's the way that worked out. Made little rocket stoves and stuff. Wasn't a big deal. Eventually I said I needed a building. So I built half of this, the front half of this, and ended up having a building where cooking could happen. Built my own grill kind of out of fire bricks and you just put sticks in it and lit a fire, a little bit of firewood, and it worked. In the first year before winter, I had power and I had water. And 
that was really awesome. And I had the starts of this kitchen. Into the second year, I started really pushing and got shelving built, put uh, countertops in. These are actually just Quick Creek countertops. I put cement board underneath and made forms and poured concrete just like you would pour a sidewalk. The rest of that year was mostly spent upgrading stuff I already had. I got a small portable washing machine for clothing, put that in the camper. I actually had gotten hot water off of three solar panels right to the water heater that came with the camper and it just goes right to the heating element and heats the water up for me. Upgraded the water system like I talked about before. Added more solar panels because it's so cloudy here, it's so overcast, and these panels do charge the batteries through the clouds, particularly if you have extra for the cloudy days. The second year, I realized the size of the outdoor kitchen just wasn't cutting it. It was just getting filled with too much stuff, and it just wasn't working out. So from this point on, this addition got added, and I also refurbished an old wood cook stove. More concrete countertops. They were working out. They're still working out cook stove to cook on and I got so tired of just slapping stuff together and just you know just doing things just good enough and I said I want some nice shelves so I actually took slab wood cut all the corners scribed them to all the different pieces and actually made a nice shelving system and felt good and invigorated about it ended up making a kitchen sink in here out of this tub drilled a hole in it made a drain put a faucet on it ran water lines to it and I also did this glass rinse for thing. This is a rock that came out of the creek and I thought it was pretty cool. Now I can put glasses on. They have these in like bars and stuff and it's just really, really cool. Two years after I was here, all that was set up. Ended up going up with a firewood shed, a duck coop. I've constantly had ducks here, but decided they needed a coop and Started building an outhouse, which is almost complete as of the making of this video, and it should be complete by the time most of you see this. Most of my buildings have gone up with free or cheap materials. A lot of pallets were used in this outdoor kitchen, as well as lumber from an old deck that a friend gave me. Slab wood from a sawmill mostly comprises the duck coop and a bunch of reject lumber from a different sawmill for the outhouse. Built my own doors out of it, went board and batten style. I think it looks really cool. I really love the look. Um, old patio doors for windows. My one neighbor had rented a mini excavator as well and it was cheaper for the week. And so I actually put in a duck pond up here so the ducks can hang out in a pond if they want to and rerouted the uh, kitchen sink drain over there as well as most of the rainwater from the roof. If I'm not using it to fill the hot tub, which is most of the time I'm not doing that, um, all the rainwater runoff goes right into the pond and it's actually holding water pretty well. Here's a couple of my ducks hanging out along with Minion running around and a robot lawnmower over there, which is a very new thing. Got two ducks hanging out in the coop right now. They're sitting on top of eggs. I have one duckling that was in an incubator. Unfortunately, most of the eggs didn't make it, but he's hanging out at a little dog cage inside the camper so I can keep a good eye on him. Most recent thing I did was put up a carport here at the driveway. I also uh, actually had my neighbor come over. He has a skid loader. We constantly trade labor and we hang out with each other. We're, we're good friends. There's a couple neighbors around here like that, but he flattened out my parking area, turned it from mud, got some gravel, put up a carport. Now I've got a spot to store some extra lumber, park some four wheelers, maybe a vehicle, do some projects in there. There's a three year recap. Well, what's next? A house is a really big priority out here, um, but I wanted to get all the infrastructure done first because I want to take my time building a house. And that camper is getting cramped. It's getting small. The house is eventually going to go way over there. I've already got it mapped out, but for now, I'm actually going to put some living quarters in the storage building. The storage building is called a storage building for a reason. It is an absolute disaster. Um, but I've started doing framing, even some insulating. Half of this building is going to be living quarters. It's already got a wood stove in it. I'm going to end up putting a shower over there. It's going to be pretty much an open concept. I'm trying to think. I think it's somewhere around, uh, I shouldn't say. I don't remember how many square feet it is. The other side is filled with junk, including some more insulation and building materials. But this part is going to be living quarters so I can hang out here while I take my time and build my house exactly how I want it to be. I'm not really sure what my house is going to look like yet. There's so many different options, all kinds of uh, passive solar you can do with them. I used to be a contractor, so I'm very familiar with conventional building. Probably going to lean that way. It's going to be a single story house right, right up there where that 
old wood storage shed is. I'm probably gonna do about 1,200 square feet. Nothing big, nothing fancy. I'm gonna make it nice inside, nice outside. Probably go with the slab wood look because I think that's just awesome. I do also have a sawmill that I could use to uh, mill my own lumber. We'll see what happens with that, whether I do that or not. It's extremely time consuming. Once the house is complete, which possibly I'll start in 2024, we'll see. Probably though, I set ambitious goals and try really hard to hit them. Once the house is complete, it might take me two years to actually do. I could do it faster, but if I'm gonna live there forever, I'm gonna take my time and do it exactly how I want to. This carport, and this camper is no longer going to be necessary at some point. I think both of those will end up getting moved. And I'll put up a garage here, like a three-car garage. Um, it'll kind of be a workshop, garage, whatever. Basically what the carport is, but much bigger and nicer. After all that's complete, animals. This is a homestead after all. I don't want to bog myself down with a bunch of uh, animal chores when I'm trying to build stuff. Because it'll just take me twice as long to build things. So... I think there's a certain order that makes sense to go in and animals last but i have a couple other fields real similar to this one I may put up a barn may get cattle might get emu i love emu emu are cool i actually hatched one out of an egg recently um that's pretty much the future plans beyond that i don't have a whole lot of plans i kind of go with the flow see what happens but i don't want to endlessly build for the rest of my life at some point i just want to sit back and say you know what this is good i'm happy I'm just going to maintain what i got now, somebody probably typed way earlier on before they got to this point in the video, how do you make money? Obviously, I'm on social media, and that's a big part of it. Um, one of the things I do is sell coffee. I've been roasting coffee for probably five or six years now. I love espresso. Got all kinds of fancy equipment, um, including this uh, automatic pour-over, which is super cool. I roast my coffee here out of this. Unfortunately, since I live off-grid, the health department doesn't think this is a commercial kitchen. Not that I blame them. So I have a good friend of mine roasting my coffees for me. And the other thing I do is beard care products. I didn't believe in beard care products for a long time. I've grown this beard without beard care products, and it's grown. But it hasn't been soft, straight, smooth, or looked good. Um, so I ended up coming up with my own line of beard care products. I have beard butters, beard oils, beard cough. I have fresh roast coffee scented beard oil is what I mean. Um, I got beard brushes, all that kind of stuff. Um, I design my own products. None of them have to use ingredients so I can say that this may enhance hair growth or may promote hair growth. None of that. That's all scam stuff. It's just to hydrate the skin under the beard, hydrate the beard, and smells good. And I also have an unscented one for people that aren't into the scents. My most recent product is diffusers because the feedback I get on the scents of beard oils that I have is really, really good. A lot of people just rave about it, so I actually ended up making a home diffuser line for it. By the way, all products are available at narrowwayhomestead.com. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel. If you want to see more, you will because there's plenty more coming. There's absolutely no way I've spent enough time on my good buddy Minion. I've had him for nine years. He's the most awesome dog in the world. He's really well trained and he's my best buddy. And I found him under my car one day. Oh. Yes, Minion, I found you under the car, you remember? Wasn't that cool? You were freezing to death. I rescued him or he rescued me. Not really sure what the best way is to say that, but he's been here for all of it. He's been, uh, been with me when I started contracting and everything else. Speaking of which, some of you might wonder, what did I do before all this? Well, I'm going to give you a recap, and it's going to be a short recap, but here you go. In my old life, I was a general contractor. When I first started my business, I did doors and windows, mostly subcontracting for other contractors. Before that, right out of high school, I worked for a custom builder for nine years. When I first started my business, I had an old K5 Blazer and a utility trailer. I actually ran this thing on waste motor oil for a long time. Also had a Mustang I really liked, but I ended up selling it for a work truck for my business. The first jobs I did were small jobs doing rot repair and leak fixes. Eventually, I got tired of working around the weather and switched to interior work. Interior renovation was what I did for the first five years before I moved out here. Ended up doing a lot of trim work like retreading stairs. Even had a small shop where I could refinish cabinet doors. Always seemed like one job led to another. I started doing entire bathrooms and tile showers. And then people wanted tile in their kitchens, so I did some tile backsplashes. I also did a lot of electrical work. It just kind of came with the renovating part of the job. 
Worked in some 200-year-old houses, closing up doorways, matching existing trim. Ended up finishing a fair amount of basements, too. I lived in town on a tenth of an acre, a little two-story, hundred-year-old house. Lived the suburban life and really didn't like it a whole lot. I bought a little scooter one day and found out I really had a love for two-wheeled vehicles. Motorcycles was definitely one of my favorite hobbies. I would often drive them to measure jobs up and give quotes. I also liked old computers like this old Commodore 128. My love for video games led me to building my own custom computers and even built a few for friends. One time I even went to Madison Square Garden and watched professional video games. Oh, and here's what I looked like without a full beard. Working 80 hours a week pretty much burned me out on my current lifestyle. Although I did land some cool jobs like working in this MRI room. Gotta get pretty creative when you're not allowed to use metal tools on a job. I also tried to work on my own vehicles, although honestly, I really wasn't that good at it. Another hobby I had was fixing old pocket watches. I would tear them all apart and put them back together and see if they worked. Eventually, I moved out to the country and rented some horrible trailer in the middle of nowhere. Wanted my own place, but land taxes were crazy there. I ended up buying this old camper and fixing all the leaks and gutting it and fully restoring it on the inside. I found a property in West Virginia where the land prices and taxes were 10 times lower. Experimented with solar before I moved. I moved to an empty field in spring 2020 and promptly put up a storage building and built an outhouse out of old slab wood from a nearby sawmill. Took a couple weeks off for a brown recluse bite. I got a 10-year plan for this property and it's going to be awesome.